All right, insulation for the stealth camper. So I've ripped out all the interior panels of the rear and you can see all my soundproofing stuff. Uh, there, there isn't too much room in here for insulation but there's a fair bit. I'm basically just going to try and shove as much of that uh, yellow insulation -y stuff there into these crevices as possible. Uh, there's obviously quite a fair amount of room here as well as on the other side. I can get uh, a few millimeters. The stuff compresses really well so I can just keep shoving it in there basically. Um, the good part about this is there are really no moving parts and no water passing through any of these doors because none of the windows are even open. Uh, this is especially important for the uh, just rear sliding doors because there's a huge amount of unused space in them. I must have run out of <laughs> insulation material actually. I usually soundproof very thoroughly. Hey, well, that's kind of loose. That's no good. And the original glue that held the inner metal stuff and the outer metal stuff uh, together has kind of failed all over on this vehicle, so it was a bit very rattly. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure what to do about that really. And there's a similar story on the other side. So I'm just going to shove it, this stock full of <laughs> insulation and, and mount it back together. Here's the panels just lying uh, in a pile. They're literally just stuck down with these clips of their cardboard. Not very high quality, but uh, it's good enough. I'm going to paint these white. And as far as ventilation is concerned, uh, we do have on this side a little uh, vent which uh, has a little flap that opens up if there's positive pressure. So uh, this is pretty much set for uh, an exhaust fan. Just have to get rid of some of this stuff around here. Uh, but on the other side we don't seem to be as lucky. There's basically nothing mounted here and I haven't really been able to find any holes. Uh, so I'm going to have to take the bumper off for uh, to wire off the solar panel anyway. So I'm going to have to see uh, what I can do about that. And because ventilation has to be installed before the insulation because it's going to get, get just so messy otherwise. So I guess the bumper is going to come off next. And the rear bumper comes off super easy on this vehicle. It's just attached with a few screws and a lot of these uh, plastic screwy clip thingies which work excellently. Uh, one stripped out on me but that was my fault. And uh, this lets us see what we've got inside. So there's a lot of grime and dirt there. And uh, here is uh, our factory outlet vent which uh, it's going to work fine. Some crap in there. Not an issue. But sadly, if we go to the other side, there's just nothing there. They didn't bother cutting the hole. So, that's a bit annoying. I really would like to have one fan on each side. So, I'm going to really have to contemplate whether or not to cut a new hole. And in the fading out of daylight, we have a hole. I don't like cutting holes in this thing, but it's necessary for the course. Come on, out with you. My clad didn't do a very good job. Oh, well, there we go. Hole. It's slightly smaller than the actual hole for the original vent. So, if I ever want, if I want to mount a new vent on there, I'll just have to grind the hole up just a tad more and uh, buy a vent. Uh, but uh, yeah, that'll do for the time being. So my plan right now is to basically mount, instead of flaps, I'll just mount a thin filter here instead to prevent any horrible large things and dirt from entering. Uh, but yeah, I'll use the one-way vent uh, feature, which is obviously to prevent uh, exhaust gases from entering the car too easily, but it's a compromise. I'll have to, I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes. The fans are going to blow out, so it's not going to suck it in if the engine is running. I think that'll be it for this evening. I'll paint that up a bit to prevent from rusting. And then I'll go to bed. And there is our new ventilation hole. Uh, two coats of primer. I put one on last night and uh, another one uh, when I get up today. So that should be pretty sturdy and doable for the foreseeable future and above all it won't 
rust to pieces like all other Nis Nissan things do. It doesn't matter how it looks because it's going to be underneath a bumper anyway. And so today I have been working on stuff over there. I have painted the internal panels of the van, all of them. They're just white. Two coats of white, same as I did the ceiling. Works out pretty okay, although the cardboard doesn't absorb it quite as well as the plywood. And uh, since that I've been working on a ventilation. So, uh, you can see the fans I've chosen are centrifugal fans uh, because that uh, it gives me the angle of the air right away because I want to, you know, the holes are down there. You might be able to see it if we really go there. Yeah, that, that's the hole in the vehicle. So I want the air to be moving down and then out. So these uh, provide a very a useful uh, way of dealing with that. I've just uh, uh, used second-hand server fans, deltas, rated 1.2 amps. They actually draw about half that, and they're not too loud, uh, even at full speed. Uh, they're certainly not super quiet, but uh, uh, compared to just to the blower of a normal automobile, I, I would give them an OK. So this one's test-fitted. And yeah, there's, there's a bit of a loudness going on, but this is running straight off a 12 volt battery and I'm going to have some like 5 volt regulator to just uh, set the speed of them. But we do get quite decent airflow from them. You can feel some puffing and huffing on the outside if you go there. So I have mounted these, uh, this one's just in all original holes up the top here. And I've made it using rubber grommets to just decouple it a bit, and uh, it it does do some good because they are a bit unbalanced, and I think the rough uh, uh, drive of a motor would couple very well into the relatively thin metal here, so that's a nice noise upgrade. I did drill two new holes down there. They made real five rubber grommets in total, and uh, I just to make the adapter plate, I just used uh, some leftover. 4mm plywood, and that's pretty much the same thickness as uh, the normal mount of a computer fan. So these are uh, just absolutely bog standard uh, computer rubber grommets work excellently. I just drilled some 4.5mm uh, holes in the vehicle and 4mm holes on the plate, and uh, it fits excellently. So to install these, uh, you, you'd obviously have to uh, take off a panel, but they just uh, slide in and go down like so. I'm going to pull the grommets through I'm going to have to wire them up before I get the panels installed though. I'm not entirely certain as to how to do that actually. It's, there's a bit of space issues. I'm not certain how the actual loom is drawn in the vehicle. It probably goes up in that pillar and comes out over there. But I'll, I might adjust uh, Take it out of this hole since all the solar stuff is going to be coming out there anyway. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. Uh, so, onwards. Uh, I've also constructed the glue should just about be drying up. There's some air filters uh, in place of the one way valve and the, well, nothing on the other side. And uh, here they are. And uh, uh, prior to beginning this project, I took a tour to the local recycling center and uh, ripped some of this uh, magnet stripping out of old refrigerator doors. This stuff, well, it's not super strong. Uh, when you have a considerable distance of it, this will not move. It will come off if you pull it, but uh, uh, forwards and backwards, it's, it's just not going anywhere. I can apply, apply significant force on that. And uh, I think we can demonstrate it by just hanging this piece. Ah. But yeah, you get the point. It doesn't take a whole lot of this stuff to make a reasonable uh, a friction fit. So, I have just taken some of this mos mosquito net and glued it onto the magnet strip using uh, uh, I call this shoemaker's glue. I'm not entirely certain what it is. It's quite flexible and quite quick and quite tacky. And this one should just uh, go on, like so. Beautiful. It's a bit off-center, but that feels very sturdy. 
a lot better. Originally I was just going to put some of the stuff on top of the netting but that didn't work out. There was just, just a bit too much space in between and there's almost no friction in this material so it was just sliding about. But yeah, I got the other one for the other side of there. It would also be drying up just about now. This one turned out a bit less ugly since uh, this is just a square hole without any holes, any screw holes drilled into it. Let's just see if it fits. Yeah, that's not going to be going anywhere. That's that very sturdily made, and it's not even perfectly in place. Not bad. I'm very happy with that. So some more glue on this to just stir it up a tiny bit more just to make sure it doesn't come apart and uh, then I can basically put the bumper back on. Let's just uh, run the fan a bit so you get to, perhaps we can get some wind noise in the microphone. So there's that coming out. That's going to work just fine, especially when I've got two of them. I'm uh, going to have to see how the entire exhaust situation works out. Uh, when I'm driving, I wouldn't have to be forced to have the fans running as, as soon as I'm driving because that's going to carry over even if I'm not using this as a camper. Hmm. Oh well, time will tell. Onward, fan wiring. And there we go. The fan should now be wired up. So it's just going straight over there, across the headlight, uh, across the interior light, down there. Now, due to the way the car's constructed, they haven't drilled any holes in the back of this. It's welded on the outside, so I have to run the wire <laughs> through that hole. That's what those little plasticky things there are. That's actually wiring loom going in those, just crossing the frame. And but uh, this is all the same section, so it's just going straight down there, through a little hole in there, and connected to the fan. And the right side is, of course, a lot simpler since it just has to run over to that hole where everything's going to come out. So I just use some crappy old speaker wire for that. Uh, rubber is tough, so it's very good quality, very durable, but uh, I prefer to use this uh, double insulated stuff for the actual longer run since this can take a bit more scuffing without risking exposed copper. Anyway, we've got everything wired up for a test, so let's see if they'll run. Now that sounds very stereophonic. You can't pick it up due to my camera mics. But both fans are indeed running just fine. Oh, there's a fair amount of air filter. So there, there's still some uh, feedback so to speak since I haven't put the insulation in so a lot of the air is just poofing up over here and coming back out but that's going to be remedied. Especially on this side you can just see how that little strand is moving in the wind. It's going to be fixed. I'm really happy I made them on rubber grommets because if I touch the metal of a vehicle it's barely moving, but if I touch the fan mount, there's a like 100-ish hertz vibration to it that's being entirely absorbed by the rubber mount. So that's excellent. Very happy. Definitely going to need speed controller for me though. And another day draws to an end. But I've certainly, we've certainly achieved quite a bit today. So the last few hours I've been uh, pulling the solar panel wiring through, so I made a plan for it. Uh, this wire is uh, going to be attached to a vehicle at all times. It's going to run over here, down here, and come out in one of these automated connectors somewhere around here. Kind of all these. I like it that way. And uh, that will uh, connect up to uh, the last piece of this blue wire I've got which I've stuck uh, the other end of that connector as well as some MC force onto. Uh, it's obviously not thick enough to actually uh, connect properly to MC force, so I've just used lots of tape and lots of grease to keep it kind of watertight. And uh, this is going to work so that these are going to run up to the roof rack. 
somewhere around there. Go back a ways and come down along this line, attached to one of these. So it's just going to come down in one straight line. It's one of these. Ah, it's going to be able to handle the aerodynamic force of that, no doubt about it. I think I might either zip tie or kind of staple the wire uh, to this magnet. It's a bit tricky because if you just lift it a bit like this, the zip tie under there, you lose a lot of grip. So I'll have to think about that tomorrow. But for the time being, everything's looking fine. The glue has dried properly and these they are sitting like they were almost original. They're very, very tight. I love them. Turned out even better than I dared expect. And I've got my panels over there in the barn, nice and painted white. And I'll probably get installing those tomorrow actually. Sweet.